John here guys and today we're finally doing the follow-up to the smooth operator by Catalyst Machine Works. This is the full build, the follow-up, the good stuff and let me tell you guys this is the finest build I have ever done. <laughs> Um, not just the finest freestyle build, but the finest build ever, period. I have spared no expense in this build. Really spectacular, spared no expense. Uh, because in addition to being the finest, it is also the most expenses, expensive, coming in at a staggering $462 retail price tag for all of the components herein. So that includes the smooth operator frame uh, with the GoPro mount accessory option, which is extra. I am using the Brother Hobby 2207 1750 KV, the R6 with the upgraded uh, bearings. Bam, that's right. Uh, this thing is quite impressive. I just can't believe how stupendously amazing this thing is. Uh, I, I really don't even know what to say. It's just like, how could one quad be so beautiful? Uh, in addition to that, I'm using the HGLRC Titan Stack. I'm using Oscar's Backpack VTX by AKK. I am using the Runcam Micro Eagle for my camera. The Luminaire Axie Stubby for my antenna. And it just doesn't get any better than this, guys. This is perfection. This is everything that you could ever want in a quad and more. I am incredibly pleased with how this build came out. I'm chuffed to bits, as the British might say, and I have used every trick in Catalyst uh, Machine Works build cookbook <laughs> that you can find. I ran the wires down the sides. Now, instead of using heat shrink on the arms to hide the wires, I used a bit of the M3 Super 33 uh, electrical tape. This is premium electrical tape that holds very well. Doesn't leave a sticky residue. That keeps the top of my arms looking clean. I also borrowed their technique of getting, I finally got some shrink wrap large enough to hold an XT60 and a capacitor in there. So this top mount battery is nice and neat using a couple of uh, two straps, of course. And, uh, I also, I took it off, but I'm gonna be mounting a tiny LED uh, right down here on the bottom of the arm just to help with uh, protection. And uh, this thing flies better than anything I've ever built. The footage that you can get with this setup is incredibly smooth. The, <laughs> the reception that you're gonna be getting through your receiver antenna, I'm using XM Plus with these little forever tubes that sit on either side uh, so that of the GoPro, so they remain undisturbed, but yet in full view of your radio at all times so that you have incredible uh, reception the entire time that you are flying uh, is stupendous. Now, we've talked about the Catalyst Machine Works um, staggered arm design many times before, but the front arms are, as you can see, about six to eight mils lower than the rear arms, meaning that the rear arms are constantly getting nice, clean, fresh air, and they are, <laughs> that makes this thing run smooth indeed. So it lives up to its name in every sense of the word smooth. Um, look at the rear right there that you can see. Oops, something just fell. <laughs> that you can just see right there. Oh, wow. This thing is beautiful. Now these motors, as I covered in that previous video, are John E. Fly, not Johnny Fly, Johnny Fly approved. And uh, they work great. This build comes in at about 370 grams minus the GoPro. Uh, but these motors have no problem pushing this very large yet smooth craft around through the air. No problem at all indeed. Um, even with the GoPro and a 1250 milliamp pack 6S battery. 
this thing is a beast but yet so smooth and um i did gain a couple of grams by using this run cam micro eagle but when you're going to be flying the best when you want to get the smoothest footage you also want the cleanest picture for your fpv camera feed now for those of you that are wondering that may be new to the hobby the reason i have two cameras here is this is the camera that i'm actually using to see through my first person view or fpv goggles um, now this is a low resolution but high but very also, also low latency video feed that allows me to see in real time what the craft is doing now the gopro is recording high def footage um, right here so that I can review playback and utilize that footage to my every YouTube need uh, as you've seen many times on the channel now a lot of times I'll have regular old DVR footage but not GoPro footage and that's what this thing is for because you can try and fly freestyle try as you might on a race build and while I will say that I do feel that it's easier to do freestyle with a race quad than it is to race with a freestyle quad I did see a gentleman out at the race the other day racing with one of these and doing quite well too, I will say. And it handled a few tumbles uh, pretty dang well. I don't think he I damaged anything on the day, but I did see him hitting some gates, hitting some grass, um, knocking around, doing some hard landings, um, but no issues at all. I don't plan to be too rough with mine because I just love it so much. Um, this also presents quite an issue for me on the channel, guys, because as you know, pretty much everything that I touch on this channel is ultimately for sale. I have to sell things in order to buy new things so that the channel constantly has new material and then I can get to test everything that I like to test. Um, so it works out for everyone involved. But uh, now, as I mentioned, this is tying up quite a bit of channel capital, but I don't know if I can part with this thing. I mean, after all, any good FPV uh, pilot should have a decent freestyle rig, right? So can I just keep this forever? I mean, I don't see myself getting rid of it. I can tell you without boast, without question, that this is the finest quad that I have ever built. And it has no equal. Um, so, you know, if a six-fingered man should appear and offer me one-tenth the promised price, then somebody's gonna have to avenge me at some point. When the six-fingered man appear and request a special sword, my father took the job. He slept a year before he was done. I've never seen its equal. Uh, I, I mean, if you've never ever built a premium build before if you've been racing for far far too long and <laughs> if you've raced for way way too long then and you haven't flown freestyle in a long time other than on your race builds then do yourself a favor just build up one nice freestyle rig doesn't matter what it is but if you want the best feeling that you can possibly get I have to say, you cannot go wrong with the build that I have done here. It is my finest work. I spent quite a lot of time making this build the epitome of clean build design. Oh man, uh, I love the catalyst design again that all of your components once you're built up are protected in there. I'll have some pictures of some of the wiring along the way. I left these wires quite long, so if I ever want to move to a six inch version of this, the wires will still be plenty long to do that. Some people were saying that the HGL, HGLRC Titan isn't actually rated for 60 amps. It's a lie, blah, 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 blah. But I have had no problems with this setup. Um, it has a tremendous amount of power. Um, again, this is uh, running the prescribed capacitor here. I'm running them on my tried and true HQ 4.5v1s with no issues. I have about probably 15 to 20 packs on it so far. Now I do run it on my Tyrannus on the you know the, the model that I also use for all my racing, which has a throttle limit at 88%. Um, so that should really avoid any high amperage spikes. I mean, don't forget that typically on 6s you're actually going to be producing less amperage than on 4s so your components may potentially be safer uh, as long as you're just not blasting 
everything to the moon, which which I'm not going to be for this freestyle. So let's take a look at some of the beautiful, scrumptious, delicious footage. And you tell me how smooth this thing is or isn't. I do notice a tad bit of jello, but that's just because I'm really not a very good freestyle tuner. I tune in order to get my rates and my feel how I need them to to go around a track. So if you do notice any jello and you are a freestyle pilot and know how to tune for smoothness, definitely um, toss me some ideas. I'm happy to try them out. But uh, man, what a feeling. Uh, now, for those guys on the road ride teams or, or the other groups that do amazing freestyle and just bando bashing, thrashing your quads, if you're like cricket FPV and you're doing insane backwards tricks, that basically put your quad at ultimate risk at any second they could meet their untimely demise and ultimate destruction. I don't know how you guys can do that with quads that are this beautiful. Um, I, I mean, people often say don't love your quads, and I definitely don't. I feel like almost all of my racing quads are just tools. You know, they, they break apart, you replace a part, you keep them running. Um, they're ultimately iterations of, of something that started a long time ago and they just kind of evolve over time. There's always like a core center component there, but it's almost like, you know, a rye bread where you're just like keeping one or a sourdough bread, where you're keeping that one core piece and just adding more ingredients to it. But for this thing, oh man, I just, I just love it. It's, I, I, I might love this one. I'm not gonna give it a name, you know, so a lot of people do like to do that. And if you do, I'm not, you know, clowning on you or anything, but it's stunning. If you want the best, I am gonna be trying a couple of other freestyle frames in the very near future as part of this freestyle renaissance that I mentioned not too long ago. But uh, golly, I kinda, I'm kicking myself for starting with this because I don't know how you're gonna be able to top this in any way, shape or form. Thanks guys.